Hi everyone, you're with Lucy from Art Shed Angel and today I'm showing you how to do some multiple layer prints using your jelly plate and magazine photos. So this is an extension to one of my other videos which I will put a link up to here as well. So please watch, there's lots to see and at the end there's a little bit of a bonus so watch right to the end. Let's get started. So today I'm using my larger jelly plate. It's, it is actually clean, it's got some bits of paint on it but it doesn't matter. I've got three magazine photos here and they are from Bazaar magazine. Um, glossy magazines work best and you can watch my other video, the links above, um, to see a little bit more about that. Now I'm using an artist acrylic. Um, the main thing is not the paint but how you put it on. So you can see here I am using my roller to get this nice and even. Now in this particular one I'm not going to put it all the way to the edges because I want a little bit of the effect of having the lighter colours at the side. So I've got it nice and you can see there's kind of a sheen to it but it's not really glossy. So the most important thing here is is not to put it on too thick. Now I've put my magazine photo down, I'm giving it a nice rub with my hand. I'm just adjusting my light here and I nearly dropped the light on the table. So <laughs> I'm actually just getting it and rubbing it and the magic happens here. Now if you are not sure about this please have a look at that other video because I've got a lot of instruction on that as well but pretty much it depends on how much paint you put down. So the important thing is not too much paint and roll it on. And other thing that is important is to make sure that you condition your plate first. So just put some paint on the plate, roll it out and just put some paper on it. Do it with different colors so you don't waste your paint. Now I'm just using this piece of paper here which is a bit of an unfortunate photo really. Um, and I'm using it to you put some paint on because what I'm going to do now is this is going to be a layered print. So you can see here I'm just taking my roller and I've got some nice purple here and I'm just rolling it around the outside to give texture. So the kind of print that we're doing here is one where we are I'm going to pull all, put all the layers down and let them dry and then we're going to pull them all off at once and it's really really quite effective and it's also a little bit um, oh it can sometimes works well and sometimes not as much so you know this is something you've really got to play with but the fun thing about a jelly plate is that you actually can play. So now I'm going to let it dry. It's quite important with this process to make sure that each layer is dry before you do the next. So now what I'm going to do is add some texture and detail. I'm using a stencil here but you can see I'm kind of not laying the stencil down flat because what will happen it'll, it'll actually pull the design back off again. So when I'm doing the stencil I'm being very careful to keep it kind of angled and I'm just doing this to do some texture. You could use some bubble wrap or all different things for this and if I turn the stencil back over you can see I can put some of the paint that's on the stencil from the roller back onto the plate. So I'm going to let this dry again. So now that it's dried I'm going to add some yellow paint and I'm going to add this on with a brush. Now it doesn't matter how you age, add your paint to a jelly plate. The important thing here though is that I'm letting the layers dry. It doesn't matter if each layer is dry if you're not putting it over the top of each other but wherever you're putting a layer on top of another layer it must be dry for this particular process. So this is the yellow part and then I'm going to roll some copper over the top. So I'm letting this dry and now I'm going to use some copper paint which I just spilt everywhere oh my gosh look what I've done ah oh, these things happen <laughs> I am a bit of a paint spiller so I'm going to use that paint up and then I'm just going to put some of the paint back into the container so I'm just using my jelly plate to put the copper around the edges 
and I did wait for the yellow to dry. I'm kind of not showing the drying process here. I try not to force the um, drying. If you force your drying, what often happens is that you get a crust on the actual acrylic and the inside of the acrylic isn't dry and then you end up with it not working um, to its best result. So actually just let it dry. I have a little fan on my desk that you may see from time to time and I use that fan to help it dry. With the copper, I didn't want it to be too thick. So what I'm going to do now is just roll it out a little bit. So I'm just using my roller and you can see it's kind of gluggy. It's going to take forever to dry. But what I'm doing very carefully is just rolling it out so that I end up with a nice smooth layer that will dry a little bit faster. So I don't want to go too much over the top of her, just a little bit, but I'm not doing over her face. So... I'm just doing this to get a nice textured background. We want this to be really interesting. I've let it dry again. You can see my little fan. They're very, very handy actually. It's better than to put heat on it. So I've used my little fan and this time I'm going to use, it's kind of a flesh color. It's um, quite a nice sort of light acrylic heavy, um, light color but a heavy bodied paint that I'm actually using and it just shows I'm going to be using different paints in this process and you'll see how each paint works differently so what I'm doing now is just giving it an even coat I made really sure that all those coats underneath were dry because the coat that I'm doing this time is the coat that's going to pull the whole print up so you can see here, I'm just doing a really nice even coat and making sure that there are no lines and bubbles or anything like that. Now I'm using a good quality um, hot press watercolor paper here because, um, because of the amount of layers, it does need to be a good piece of paper. If your paper delaminates when you pull it off, um, it's the wrong paper. So that's not something you're doing wrong. It's something, it's a problem with the paper. Now I'm giving it an extra roll with the brayer. I'm giving it nice firmness to make sure all the paper is stuck on. So what we want to do now is get that whole image to pull off at once. Now sometimes it'll leave little bits and pieces behind, but that's actually quite nice. And, it, and I actually kind of like that grungy look that it gives anyway. But we're going to wait now for around two minutes. So the clock's ticking again. Oh, it's exciting time now. It's time to pull our print up. So as I start to pull it up, I can see there's a bit of paint left behind. But I'm looking at the actual print and going, oh, I quite like what I'm getting. So you can see there it gets quite stuck and this is why you need a sturdy paper. And I'm just pulling it to see what I'm going to get. And the main thing for me is that Lady Gaga is all there. And as I pull this, you can see that she is. So I'm really happy with the look of this. I actually really like around the bottom with the cream. It's almost like it's meant to be like that. And you can see all those colors I've got underneath. You can see the copper and the yellow. And I'm very, very happy with that one. So a thumbs up for that one. Now, what we're going to do is try the next one. And I'm going to go through these steps again with you to show you how it works time after time. So this time, I'm not even going to clean the jelly plate. Let's just leave that paint on there that's on there. Let's put our black paint on and get started. So again, it's really important and I can't stress this enough. If you're not having success with this, you really need to have a go and make sure that your um, paint is not too thick. Um, if it's too thick or too thin, it doesn't work. So it's about, about getting a little, you know, playing. This time I'm putting a little bit of purple in it as well. And that will just give an interesting effect. If you can see the um, like little lines through your paint, it's usually too thick. So this time I'm rolling more of the plate and I'm going to grab my picture and put this on. So when you put your image down, remember to, to think about how you're going to place it. I'm putting that girl down. I put her down gently and I give a good rub. 
When I rub this, I give a firm rub, but I don't rub too hard. And even with the brayer, I'm just giving a brayer just to, what we're actually wanting to do is make sure that the paint is all neatly between the plate and the paper. So don't leave it on there too long. We don't want it to get stuck there. And I'm just pulling off to see whether I get a good print. And oh my goodness me, she's actually quite gorgeous. So you can see I left all that white paint around the bottom and that's actually going to be part of the next print. So there's no real um, bad thing about leaving little, little bits. And this time I'm again going to just use my brayer and I'm going to put some yellow and some magenta. It's actually a quinacritone um, magenta and a nice yellow that I'm using there. And I'm just going to put that all the way around her face. So this is one of those um, things that you can really choose the colors you want. If you're wanting to do a color theme in your journal, you can be using colors that go with that. I've got, um, I've got all that black underneath. I've got the red and the yellow and the beautiful bright colors. And here I'm even going to put a little bit down the side of her face. Um, don't know if I'm going to like that at the end, but hey, it's, it's worth having a play. Sometimes I don't just want that stark lightness of her face. So that looks like it's going to be quite a nice print. Okay, I've allowed this one to dry again. You can see I've got my fan out. And what I'm going to do now is add some um, of that color again. So this time I'm putting a little bit of that flesh color as well as I'm going to use some white to get my base color. So I don't want it to be all cream. I'm going to be using the white as well. Um, and I'm just using white acrylic there. Now I'm just going to use my brayer roller to um, spread this around. You can see it's perfectly dry because none of the paint is mixing in. I can't stress enough how critical it is that you make sure it's all dry. Now my um, cream or my flesh color paint is very lumpy so you can see that that I'm making sure that I don't keep those big lumps that I'm actually spreading them out evenly. So that is really important. This layer needs to be a nice even even layer so that the um, paper sticks to it so now again using my watercolor paper i'm just going to place that over the top and then i'm going to wait for some time now you can see there i'm using firm pressure but i'm not being too heavy-handed and i usually do get my brayer roller again and use that so then let's wait and see what we get Okay, so I've waited for about two minutes again and I can't tell you how excited I get to pull the prints off and have a look. So I'm just pulling it up and having a little bit of a look. And yes, there are some bits still left behind on the plate, but I can see that the image that I want is coming up nicely. So you can see all those beautiful colors coming through. So just pull um, gently. And you can see her face has come completely up. So I'm very, very happy with this print. And if you watch right to the end of this clip, you'll see me painting this um, some flowers onto the front of that because I thought that foreground looked like it needed some painting over the top. So again, I'm going to leave my plate like this. And so what I wanted to sort of show by doing this at real time speed is that, you know, it does take some time. I haven't got the actual timing of waiting time in there, but it's all about getting that coat the right thickness and also being patient. So you can see here I have just put a thin layer of purple because I want the black to not be so starkly black and I'm putting some black over the top and again rolling it out nice and thinly, nice and evenly. Um, somebody says they call this runway rolling so where you just kind of land your roller and roll it over and over again. Now I've got one last picture that I wanted to do and I really um, quite liked this picture. Um, the girl with a beautiful handbag. I quite like this picture too. So you can use the picture on the back if you don't um, ruin it. So again, just a nice firm 
um, press with the hands, making sure there's no bubbles. Obviously, if there's bubbles of air in there, you will get marks in your print. So just a nice firm wipe. Now I'm pulling it off. And again, I have quite a lovely print. Okay, I'm just speeding up this bit here just to show you um, what the colours I've put on. So this time I'm going to be using some different colours. I'm going to be using some blues and greens and different colours because I thought I don't want to do them all the same colour. And I'm just using acrylic paint again, rolling on. I'm, I love to get that background colour in. Um, that just kind of makes it more interesting. So when I'm putting it onto white paper, this one here I'm going to do something very different with um, using metallic. Now there was a spot on her face I just wiped off there. You can get like a, um, a Q-tip and just wipe off areas if there's like a big blotch on her face or somewhere where you don't want it to be. So you can see here I'm putting some brighter blue in and I'm going to also use my stencil to um, add some texture you can't have enough texture in your artwork i believe so just adding all these things waiting again i know you're not seeing this but i'm waiting in between layers for layers to dry um, once that blue was dry i would i put the yellow on and you can see the the it, the blue was dry because the yellow isn't mixing into it and give yourself time Okay, so again, put the fan on, let it dry completely and go and get my piece of paper cut so that I can do the next step. So with this one, um, we are going to use a metallic paint as our pool paint. So everything is dry and this is just a lovely metallic paint by Robinson and Sons. Um, you can buy from Cornelius and Sons in London and it's a beautiful liquid metallic. So I will put the link in the description and I'm using this paint to be the paint that I pull the picture up with, which will give a different sort of effect. Now you can see here, I'm making sure again that I roll it really thinly and um, I can't stress it enough. That's why I've done three different versions doing different ways just to give you the idea that, you know, you do get really good results and some paints work better than others. So if you have sometimes something not work properly, just try another paint because it might not be you. It could just be the paint. So I'm going to sit here and wait for this. Um, give it a bit of a roll with my roller to make sure that I've got all my image stuck down. And then we'll go to the reveal. Woohoo, it's reveal time. So let's have a look. I've waited around two minutes again. And this one is pulling off. Oh my gosh, it's pulling off beautifully. Look, there's hardly anything left on the plate. So this is the way you want your pools to happen. So it's good to see that you will sometimes get some really great results and other times not as good, but you can, you're seeing that they're all coming out pretty great. So this one here, I'm very happy with the plates clean. She's got that beautiful metallic in the background all those beautiful greens and that in um, around her. So I'm really, really happy with this one. Let me know what you think in the comments. I love the sheen to it. So I'm going to put this one off to dry and I'm going to get out the second print because I had a look at this and this is a little bit of a bonus thing. A lot of people ask me, what do you do with your jelly prints? Well, if I love them, I frame them. Um, I have actually sold some framed versions of my jelly prints. And when I look at this one here, the bottom right hand corner screams floral display <laughs> to me. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to paint some flowers onto it. So I'm just using quinine. Aquatone um, re, um, magenta and some white. These are acrylics because obviously to paint over this we would be using acrylics. Although I'm going to be doing a video soon where I put watercolor ground over and I do some watercolor ones. So I'm just going to speed this up for you so you can watch how I finish it. I hope you enjoyed my video and if you did please make sure you like 
my um, page and click that like button and I'm always happy for you to share my videos with others. So thank you so much for being with me and I look forward to seeing you again. You're with Lucy from Art Shed Angel.